Martin, Deputy Treasury Secretary Arayamo, representatives from uh, Baker Ripley and Catholic Charities. And, and first, I want to I want to thank uh, the Deputy Treasury Secretary for being here. It's been uh, so exciting, uh, such a joy for all the folks that have been working incredibly hard for the better part of a year to see you uh, come and visit and take the time to do this. So thank you, and and Mayor Pro Tem Martin, thank you so much for being here and 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 also uh, representing Mayor. Tur it's been uh, incredible. The heart of this partnership is our, our, our incredible working relationship between the city and county. So I want to say thank you for that. And obviously, uh, Cynthia Colbert and, 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 um, and Kalia Aguirre, uh, Catholic Charities and Baker Ripley, who've made this possible. This pandemic has knocked a lot of families down, and all of us can remember back in March of 2020, asking folks to stay home so that we could uh, we could save lives, so that we could keep our hospitals from being overwhelmed. And very quickly, that turned into people not having a home to stay in. So we've been working around the clock to keep uh, evictions from happening, to keep folks from ending up out on the street. And this has been the heart of those efforts. In Harris County and Houston, we don't leave people behind. And that's what's at the core of what we're doing here today, is highlighting a rental assistance program. The program is is special because of how efficient it is, because of how innovative it is, and because of how equitable it is. So on efficiency, since we launched the program, we have moved at record speed. We launched the program in March, uh, February 25th, actually, February 25th, we launched it. By March, we already had dollars out the door. That is more than what many jurisdictions around the country can speak for. As of this week, we have awarded $137 million to over 36,000 households, over 10,000 landlords, representing 19,000 properties. That is a huge number of people. And as you see, we continue to have events in which we're helping folks who are right on the edge of being evicted or losing their home. The program is innovative. This is not a typical rental relief or government program. We put residents first, not bureaucracy first. From the start, city and county have partnered. We have one single application, one single registration form for landlords. We have the same nonprofit partners, joint governance. We want to make sure that it's not uh, these jurisdictional boundaries that form an obstacle. We have a, a, a portal where folks can check the status of their application. So we're used to having, uh, when we order something from a private business, we can see when it's gonna arrive, we can track the package. Many times with government programs, you submit an application and you don't know whether you're gonna hear back or not. And of course that causes enormous frustration, anxiety to residents, particularly, we have a guest here this morning, particularly <laughs> to residents who are, um, are already concerned about being evicted. So we have a, a place where folks can check the progress of their applications. And the program is equitable. We don't just guess where the need is. We have an equity dashboard that identifies where in the county, which census areas need the most help, and that's where we prioritize resources and where we prioritize events. We're meeting people where they are. As you see here today, we go into neighborhoods, we work with navigators, we send legal aid, we work with over eight nonprofit partners, and we make sure to have, um, just go, go to where the need is, as opposed to asking people to, to, to and, and setting barriers up for people to go to find the resources that they need. We're targeting support for folks who are about to face eviction proceedings we actually go through eviction dockets and find who might be evicted and reach out to them so they can apply for the rental assistance program. We've partnered with six of the 16 justices of the peace to actually have uh, representatives of these organizations in the courtroom so that before an eviction proceeding goes through, there's an opportunity for landlords and tenants to work through this rental assistance program and get the support they need, both the landlord and the tenant. And so, Today, we need to first highlight the success of this program, but second, we need to help spread the word. The CDC Eviction Moratorium is a big and 
the need continues in this community. So we do ask that as we see the need, as we see participation, that folks help us spread the word. You can apply uh, online at HoustonHarrisHelp.org and there are so many people in this community ready and willing to help support both landlords and tenants and to make sure that we rebuild as strong as we can, come out with a strong economy after, uh, as, as, we, as we slowly but surely uh, work our way hopefully out of this pandemic and of course that depends on vaccination. So I'm going to repeat my remarks in Spanish very briefly and then we'll hear from, from Mayor Pro Tem Martin and, and then from the Deputy Treasury Secretary. Primero darles las gracias al secretario, eh, secretario del Tesoro, al subsecretario del Tesoro, al, al alcalde interino, a todas las personas que están aquí haciendo este programa posible. La, la presidenta de Baker Ripley, la presidenta de Caridades Católicas. Estamos todos trabajando juntos por ayudar a tantas personas que enfrentan el desalojo, a tantos, tantos hogares, tantas familias que todavía necesitan ayuda. Recuerdo en marzo y abril cuando le estamos pidiendo a todos que se quedaran en casa para ayudarnos a prevenir muertes y hospitalizaciones. Finalmente eso ha llevado a muchas personas que están a punto de perder su hogar, que no pueden quedarse en casa porque no tienen casa. Entonces por eso hemos trabajado por desarrollar un programa de ayuda, de asistencia, de renta, que ahora es un modelo para la nación. Es un modelo en eficiencia, es un modelo en innovación y es un modelo en equidad. En cuanto a la eficiencia, hemos trabajado muy rápidamente. Lanzamos el programa en febrero del año pasado y para marzo ya habíamos distribuido los dólares a las familias en nuestro condado. Esta semana hemos otorgado 137 millones de dólares a más de 36 mil hogares, casi 10 mil propietarios que representan 19 mil propiedades. La gran mayoría de la ayuda va tanto a los propietarios como a las familias. Y eso es, es muy único. El programa es innovador. Ponemos a los residentes primero, no a la burocracia. Hemos trabajado la ciudad y el condado mano a mano para tener una sola aplicación, eh, una, sola, eh, una sola página web, ten, trabajar con las mismas organizaciones sin ánimo de lucro, todos juntos. Y hemos trabajado también en un portal donde los residentes pueden revisar el estatus de su aplicación. Así no es simplemente un hoyo negro, es más como se hace en el sector privado, donde si tú pides algo por internet, aplicas algo, puedes ver si ya se va a procesar o no. El programa es equitativo y esto es importante. No solamente adivinamos dónde está la necesidad, tenemos un tablero de equidad que nos permita ver dónde hay más necesidad, más personas en riesgo de desalojo y allá llevamos los recursos. Y tenemos eventos como estos, con todos los grupos comunitarios, con abogados, eh, con varias entidades para todos ayudar a la familia más impactada. Inclusive eh, nos enfocamos a las personas en riesgo de desalojo, vamos a las cortes y hablamos con ellos allá para prevenir el desalojo. Es, es, es una tendencia, sería fácil asumir que ya está regresando la vida a la normalidad, pero ese no es el caso. Semanalmente recibimos de 2.000 a 3.000 aplicaciones y seguimos viendo mucha necesidad. El moratorio federal de desalojo se expira a finales de este mes. Entonces, tenemos que seguir con estos esfuerzos y ahí seguiremos. Por eso necesitamos que nos ayuden a informar a la comunidad acerca de este programa. Invítelos a aplicar. Pueden aplicar en HoustonHarrisHelp.org. Quiero clarificar también, los inmigrantes indocumentados califican para el programa si su propietario se registra. También califica si tiene un adulto en su hogar que tenga papeles. Entonces, aplique también. En HoustonHarrisHelp.org tenemos personas que hablan español, lo podemos ayudar a, a trabajar con su propietario o ver qué otros recursos lo podemos ofrecer. Si está a riesgo de ser desalojado, eh, contáctenos, contáctenos por internet, no se le pide eh, ningunos papeles para el proceso y si sí queremos ayudarlo a ver si podemos prevenir el desalojo. With that, I am I'm so pleased to welcome Mayor Pro Tem Martin, uh, who is, is an, an incredible partner and, and is the reason our work together in, in the work with Mayor Turner is the reason that, uh, that we're able to work so well with these nonprofits and make this project successful. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Judge. It, it's an honor to be here on behalf of Mayor Turner and the entire city of Houston. 
Mr. Deputy Secretary. It's an honor to meet you, and thank you for everything you're doing to, for us. I think what your first question was is, how do you take this, this success and move it elsewhere in the United States? And I think it's pretty simple. It's having political leaders like the mayor and like the judge and all the elected pull together in unison, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, to make sure you deliver the funds as quickly as humanly possible to the people that are most in need. And then you turn it over to great community partners like Associated Catholic Charities and Baker Ripley to do the process because that's the critical part. While we receive the money, you have to have a process that takes it from beginning to end. And you see around here the number of people, it's dramatic how much this program with rental assistance has worked and has worked to get money in people's pockets as quickly as possible with this pandemic we had. So we step out of the way, turn it over to the folks that are uh, the community partners, the not-for-profits, and let them run the process because that's what they do best. So what I would say to you, Mr. Deputy Secretary, we're honored to have you here. Uh, you're a brilliant man, but more importantly, the people here are honored to have your leadership and your vision and your statements here today to show us that you truly care and you care about this process that works. And we stand ready to work with you and to other folks around the United States to take our process, to mirror it, and to pass it along to other people so that more importantly, we get hands, we get the money in the hands of folks that need it desperately. And also look at the eviction work that we did to make sure that while we're working through the process, people have a place to go, people have a place to rest their head and to cook their food. And that's how the process works. So, it's an honor to have you here, sir, and uh, I just hope that we can help you in any way possible. And thank you for letting me say my words, Judge, and God bless. Thanks. Well, let me say uh, thank you to the people of Houston for being such great hosts to me, um, Judge Hidalgo. Um, it is a privilege to be here in Houston to get to see your leadership through this trying time. Uh, mayor Pro Tempt, thank you for those kind words, and please give my greetings to the mayor, who I look forward to seeing when I'm back in town. Uh, to um, Baker Ripley and to Catholic Charities, it has been wonderful to see the benefits of what true partnership looks like, um, not only in this community, but also throughout this city and throughout this state. Uh, one of the things that I know that is driving your success in addressing the pandemic is those partnerships. The pandemic has been extremely difficult on all Americans. Um, it happened to us, not because of us, and we are still working our way through it. Today, our success in this country is based on the fact that we are getting people vaccinated, and through the American Rescue Plan, we're providing resources to drive the recovery. But ultimately, our success as a country comes down to what it's always come down to, which is the hard work and determination of the American people. And that is true here in Houston, and we've, I've gotten a chance to see that today um, during the day as I have toured the city and gotten a chance to meet with your elected representatives and see the partnerships that are forming. Ultimately, the thing that we know is that the success of our country comes down to our communities, investing in them, working in them. And the truth is that for each one of us, um, a home is more than four walls. It's a place where we raise our families. It's a place where we feel secure. And the emergency rental assistance program that the federal government has started is intended to do just that, to make sure that Americans remain in their home through this pandemic. But in order for that to happen, it requires us to partner with local governments, with community leaders. And what we found is that there is no community that's doing this better than Houston. And that's why I'm here today, to learn from the experiences that you have here in Houston in terms of the partnerships that you've created in order to make sure that we take those partnerships and those lessons learned and we spread them throughout this country. Because the data shows us that as of June, 1.2 million Americans were faith. Houston, you have found a way to do that, not only by working through the government, um, but by also working through partnerships that have been led by your government, led by your judge and by your mayor to make sure that your community groups are working to bring people together, to make sure that resources are getting into the hands of the people who need them to make sure that people have more than just a roof over their, their heads, but they have a home, that they have the resources they need to get over the pandemic. 
And the thing that I'm committed to doing and that I know the President and Secretary Yellen are committed to doing is continuing to work with cities like Houston to make sure that you have the resources you need to make it through um, the tail end of this pandemic, to make sure that what we, we do what the President has promised, that we build back better. And by building back better, that means that we make sure that the communities that have been the most marginalized during COVID, um, many who face inequality before COVID, are, are having their concerns and their needs met during the pandemic and that we're investing in them going forward. So I'm happy to be here today um, at this location, seeing people getting assistance to make sure that they can stay in their homes. And I look forward to taking the lessons that I've learned here in Houston and talking about them in Washington and making sure that those lessons um, spread throughout our country. And I look forward to being back um, six months, a year from now, and seeing the ways in which you've invested in Houston and invested in the future of our country. So thank you so much, Judge, for having me. And thank you all for your partnership and all for all the great work you're doing here in Houston. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll take questions. How the application is available to those who do not have access to a computer? Yes. And would you guys like to go over that? Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Cynthia Colbert with Catholic Charities. So we have an, come on up. We have an online application that, so there's only one application, but also we've worked with several agencies here in the community who can get one-to-one -one help, person-to-person -person help to apply in case A, they don't have a computer or just would feel more comfortable getting help to make sure that the application is filled out correctly. These agencies are also on the ground doing outreach to the various parts of our Harris County and Houston. And so working with our agencies and with one another, we've worked to create a fairly, as best we can, barrier-free project so that people can get their rent paid and they can stay in their homes. Get that type of assistance? We do. It's, uh, so Her HoustonHarrisHelp.org has all the information. Um, and I apologize, I didn't memorize the number, but we have a team of people on the phones all the time uh, to take phone calls and offer assistance. Can you talk a little bit about that on the ground outreach? Like how you're making sure that people who don't have internet access uh, or who may not know where to look for assistance are staying informed and like, are aware that this, this program exists? Yeah, I think that's the beauty of the program is that while you see Catholic Charities here and Baker Ripley here, we actually partner with so many uh, community-based organizations that are on the ground. You've got the Alliance, uh, Urban League, uh, Chinese Community Center. I mean, we've got 16 different navigating agencies that do outreach to their own population, right? So that's what's important is that the nonprofits and community-based organizations that have reached to their population, their constituents, they reach out to them are providing the information opening their doors and so this is one example but many of the organizations are having the one-stop shop so this is really where holistically all navigators come together but individually they will have their own events and they reach out to their own constituents so we estimate that about a million people are being reached out um, by all of the navigating agencies um, um, located here today The application process will be, you know, anything 5, 10, 15 minutes. I mean, the, the process of doing the application. And then we're looking at um, anywhere between two to four weeks before, you know, if all the paperwork is complete and everything is well, you're looking at two to four weeks before the dollars get into the landlord. And during that time, we are in contact with the individual renter as well as the landlord. So they've received information either by email or, by, or and or through a phone call. Let me add something that I think is key to sure. mention, which is is the, the steady stream, right? So weekly, we have a steady stream of about 3,000 applications, 2,500 to 3,000, $8 million consistently out the door. Uh, and the vast majority, over almost 90% of applications, go to folks who are you know, 30% the area median income, very, very, very low income. And so that just tells you the extent of the need and the success that these groups have had in reaching out to the most vulnerable communities. Um, so, you know, it's easy to sort of put something on a website and say, everybody apply and leave it there. But you, what you really have to do for it to be successful is go deep into each yeah. community and do the work that is specific to a community. In this community, folks know this building. In a different community, the church, you know, the community center, some, a park, that might be the place where folks gather. And so these groups know the community and they take the resources 
there. Judge, with uh, COVID cases rising again, is the county considering raising the threat level or taking any other type of action? Look, today there, we have a little chance to, to celebrate, and we've done we've, we've done a good job bringing the numbers way down in terms of our hospitalizations and in terms of our cases. That said, the numbers are beginning to tick up again. So it is not a moment to say, uh, you know, all the progress is lost by any means, no. But we are in a precarious situation. There should not be a single other person who is eligible for a vaccine that finds themselves in a hospital bed or worse, uh, that loses their lives because of this virus. There's no excuse for that. We have vaccines that are effective, that are safe, that are free of charge, that are in every corner of this community. We're offering scholarships to children who sign up for vaccines. There's a, a, a drawing every week. We have gift cards. We're going door to door. We're taking the vaccines uh, uh, to each different community. So what we need to do right now is really dig down on getting vaccines. If you have yours already, tell your friends, your family, your coworkers, um, because especially as the kids go back to school, I am concerned. We are looking at the numbers. We're at a place where right now it still makes sense to be at yellow, but we're setting thresholds and I'm going to be guided by the data and by the thresholds. I'm not going to switch the threat level based on how I'm feeling as with everything is based on the thresholds and we're working on with the experts. But I, I am concerned. It's not time to sound the, the, the big alarm, but it is time for us to, to get back to work and not get overconfident. Can you comment on the Texas Democrats who've broken quorum? Do you support their efforts? I, I absolutely support the efforts of, of the, the legislators that are in D.C. working hard to protect the right to vote. And here's why. First, this legislation is based on the idea that there's massive voter fraud in Texas. And if you pass laws based on that false idea, you cement that false idea, you cement that and you weaken democracy. If people think that our democracy is riddled with fraud, there's not going to be trust in voting and participation. So I think it's very serious not to pass that. In addition, there's specific problematic uh, provisions over empowering poll workers. Uh, eliminating the the innovations right here in Harris County that Republicans and Democrats both both used in in, in, in record uh, numbers. So uh, you know it's very clear that it's it's a dire situation that we need the federal government to act. I think it was very smart of the legislators to go do this work in D.C. and 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 really show uh, the 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 federal legislators that we're doing everything we can. We need their help. Uh, and, and I wholeheartedly support them. So right now there's no consideration to scale back restrictions uh, of occupancy at businesses and libraries and places like that? Well, if you'll remember, a threat level system is advisory because of the decision Governor Abbott made to, to strip the, the emergency powers from the, uh, the, the, the judges and, and, uh, and mayors. And so, um, but I know it's an important message to the community and, and it would apply to, to county buildings. I am not uh, imminently to announce anything new. We're watching the numbers, we're setting the thresholds. Of course, if numbers get worse quickly, we would see a shift in the threat level, but we're going to be guided by the numbers. And look, it's all in our hands. It's all in our hands. Uh, we, Our vaccination rates are progressing. Um, we're, we're improving well past 60 percent of the eligible population has at least one shot. So, so well past the majority of people who can get the shot have it. If you don't have it, you are definitely in the minority and, and you are, are extending the suffering of this virus in this crisis, including the economic pain. So we need people to get vaccinated so all of us can go back to normal, everybody can have full confidence in the economy, we can, we can come back even stronger than we were before the virus. base en la idea falsa que hay fraude masivo en nuestras elecciones. Si pasamos leyes basadas en esa mentira, fortalecemos la mentira y debilitamos a la democracia. 
Entonces, no podemos pasar leyes basadas en, es, en esa falsa idea. Además, hay provisiones específicas en la ley que lastimarían al condado Harris, eliminarían las innovaciones que tanto republicanos como demócratas utilizaron eh, el año pasado. No hubo ningún tipo de fraude y, y todo salió increíblemente bien. Entonces, los apoyo, es una situación grave y necesitamos que el gobierno federal intervenga, entonces por eso eh, me alegra que estén allá trabajando. En cuanto al virus, sí estamos viendo las tendencias eh, moverse hacia un lado un poco problemático. El número de casos, el número de hospitalizaciones están incrementando, incrementando un poco. No es momento de alerta seria, pero sí es momento de, de tomar un segundo y decir, ok, tenemos que trabajar nuevamente por, por contener este virus. Entonces vamos a estar eh, diseñando estándares, números en los cuales iríamos de amarillo a naranja. No es el momento aún, la decisión la tomaremos basado en, en los números que definimos con los expertos. Pero sí les digo que esto está en nuestras manos, entonces por favor pónganse la vacuna, eh, es gratis, es segura. No deberíamos ver ni una hospitalización más, ni una muerte más de personas elegibles para la vacuna. Todos nosotros la hemos tenido, más del 65% de la población elegible ya se ha puesto a la vacuna. Entonces, haga eso por su familia y por su comunidad para no tener que volver a restricciones y a problemas más grandes económicos para ya poder salir de este virus. De una vez vaya y regístrese y si ya se ha, sacado, se ha, se ha hecho la vacuna, dígale a sus amigos, a su familia, a sus colegas, eh, dígales que por favor nos ayuden a todos como comunidad. Thank you. All right.